Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk very briefly about Brave dumping Google search engine from its new installs. Now, as far as this concern is concerned, if you update Brave, if you have set a search engine that was not the default, it will retain whatever your setting is. But for anybody newly installing the Brave browser, you will now have Brave Search as the default. So before we dive into the actual release of this, let me go ahead and start by this. Why do I not talk about Brave a lot? Well, Brave is an interesting, uh, an interesting, we'll call it an anomaly. I'm not sure that's the best word here. I'm not a huge fan of Brave as the company. It is created by a lot of people with deep fingers and pockets in the big tech and Silicon Valley, indicating that they may or may not actually be operating in the same way, maybe secretly in the background. Uh, there isn't any very direct specific evidence of this, except this. When If you go back and look at the founding of their company, what they told investors they wanted to do is completely different than what they've always told the people what the product does. And so we have some little misconstruement going on between how they're funding and what they're actually doing. It has had its fair share of, of scandals, some probably accidental, some not so much. In the early days of the code, they actually had session replay baked into the browser. That is the very nebulous, uh, dubious javascript and code that can keylog everything going on i rose attention to this so this is going back four years or so and all of a sudden whew, all of the references to all that vanished it was there for a while you might be able to find that if you dig through archives enough all of that stuff was cleared away a little bit they have the issue with bat coins i um their bat tokens bat coins oh, never mind um so with their tokens they create this program by which you can go on to brave and be like hey i like this creator i'm gonna go ahead and donate to said creator and uh let's go ahead and um uh, whenever you're on that content, all of the time you spend over there is racking up bat for them. And then they reach out to the creator like, hey, you've got $100 in bat tokens. Why don't you create an account with us and get them? And it almost feels like extortion because you think you're donating and supporting to that creator. I want nothing to do with bat and how it's working. And so there's a few little things like that. Outside of those, the product itself is excellent. So... I don't think it's an amazing, holy crap, let's use this over every browser is the best one out there because there is some shadiness in the past. Of course, they had an affiliate link scandal, which some of that appeared to be an accidental code bug where it would inject their affiliate link into certain page links. Uh, and that has been resolved. I don't think that was particularly, um, uh, I don't think that was a, something they did on purpose. I just think it was a, an accidental code bug. I'm okay with, with that. But overall, I think the Brave browser works works very well as a product. It does a good job of privacy and they've been doing a lot of things to do a lot of good in the privacy world. So I would recommend using the Brave browser. I would turn off the bat token features and things like that though. And then, uh, you know, just look around it at what the options are. There is no perfect search engine. In fact, uh, search engines are very much like American politicians. You just grab the one you hate the least. And that really is the way you do it. But with that being said, Brave has done some good positive things in the privacy world world and for that they must be commended and this is actually why I do use Brave in many circumstances not every circumstance I don't have it on my um, uh, on my individual uh, production computer here which I'm in the process right now of rebuilding so I may or may not have it on there in the future I just don't know yet so with that though let's go ahead and have a look at what this release looks like here so with this what we're going to do we're going to have a look at the article here. So this is from the Brave blog. Privacy preserving Brave search replaces Google as the default search engine in the Brave browser. Now this has been available to use for a while. I've actually discussed the Brave search on the channel in the past when it first came out. I think it's at search.brave.com. Let me go ahead and uh, look into that. 
So let's do that. And uh, my apologies that our um, address bars and stuff are showing around at the top. A uh, little snafu with updating. Um, over here, we can just go ahead and search for something. And uh, there you go. You have your basic search. So when they were first launching the Brave functions, then what would happen is... Um, they were starting to do their own indexing. If they couldn't find something, they would reach out into Google or Bing or other indexes to curate more results. I believe to my understanding is that they have now done away with that and everything is now indexed on their own. So they are not like start page where they're using Google searches and anonymizing by proxy. They're not like DuckDuckGo who is using Bing search results. They've created their own back end search index, which is different and independent from those other groups. So they say starting today, new Brave users will have the search functionality in the Brave browser are powered by Brave Search, giving them privacy and independence of a search browser alternative to big tech, being Bing or Google or Yahoo or things like that. Brave Search is built on top of an independent index and doesn't track users, their searches, or their clicks. Privacy-preserving Brave Search now replaces Google as the default search engine used in the address bar for new Brave users in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Brave Search as default also replaces Quant in France and DuckDuck go in Germany with more geographies to be added in the next several months. Existing Brave users will keep their chosen search engine default and can set Brave Search as the default search engine in Brave or most other browsers. So if you install Brave and you go ahead and have a look at it, then what you will find is that um, you can still set Google if you want to feed the big money machine. You can set Start Page, you can set DuckDuckGo or Brave Browser. Uh, Brave Search, excuse me, is now uh, an option. And it's really good to have alternative options even in the privacy send. Now where some people might find some controversy is down here. It is currently not displaying ads, but the free version of Brave Search will soon be ad supported. Brave Search will also offer an ad free premium version in the near future. So if you would like to create an account to get an ad free experience in the near future, you have that. That's the part that's a little odd because there is in that way, can we trust Brave that they're not storing the things, especially if I'm logged in an account and then doing all the searching, do we have a guarantee that they're not grabbing and storing and harvesting that data? Well, they don't have a history of doing that, but that does not mean they are not immune to it. So it's a question to see if anything does tie itself to the account or if the account is simply a toggle switch, whatever the case is, we'll have to have a look at that when the actual accounts come out. But what they're saying is there will always be a free version, which is going to be ad supported. Now you might go, oh, see, they're searching you with ads as well. Well, I do want to point out that both DuckDuckGo and StartPage also are ad supported. Now DuckDuckGo has a few different um, uh, models. They actually have three ways. They have a, a click or um, they have a uh, keyword based ad search system. They have an affiliate system and they have a uh, tracker radar system. And Start Page, as controversial as it is, I really don't like the company they're working with, but Start Page works with System One to sell ads through their network in a, uh, an anonymized fashion. And so looking at DuckDuckGo's page, here's advertising and affiliates. DuckDuckGo generates revenue in two ways. I think this is out of date because they have added the third way, which is the tech radar platform, uh, as they had in some of their other um, uh, other documentation that was just launched this year. So advertising and affiliate revenue. We're not going to focus on affiliate revenue here, but advertising, it is a myth that search engines need to track you to make money on web search. When you type in a search, we can show you an ad just based on the search term, for example, or if you type in car, we show a car ad. That doesn't involve tracking because it's based on keyword and not the person. I will point out that on the Switch to Linux website right now, I do have Google ads on there. When I launch the newer version of the site, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I just haven't made a final decision. But the way I have the ads push on that site, they are explicitly set to be content-based only, not based on personalization. It is an option you have in an AdSense 
that dashboard. And um, so it's there and it's something I probably just going to drop ads entirely on there and see if I can't just push the Patreon and, and uh, subscribe star uh, options instead. So those are, are certainly uh, the, the things that I'm looking into, especially since in several years, I've never actually accumulated enough money in ads to actually receive a payout. Although I've gotten perilously close, I'm surprised I'm not there. But anyway, um, DuckDuckGo does use keyword based and not basing on your person. Whereas Google, by default, it creates this profile based on your IP address, your search history. If you're logged in to Google, it will use all of this information. It will serve up ads that it, it thinks you want personalized ads as it were what I completely stand against and what DuckDuckGo does is just based on the keyword you put in so here's an example now I tried getting ads on DuckDuckGo and I don't know if it's my the security in my network was too strong or um, I did disable ad blockers to test out I was not able to get ads pushing me on DuckDuckGo for some reason but anyway in theory according to DuckDuckGo they do have the ads up there so that is certainly an option that they have and then uh, there's advertising and things like that. Uh, Start page actually had a, a decent blog. This is February uh, 24th, 2020, talking about advertising that respects privacy. Now, again, I'm going to state here uh, for a completion, Waterfox, um, which I'm currently displaying to you right here because due to an update, Firefox will no longer display in OBS. It appears to be a common bug. Uh, I'll be looking at that, or if anybody knows how to fix that quickly, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but uh, I'll figure that out later, or I don't know, because I'm in the middle of rebuilding the computer, I'll sort it all out later. Um, but anyway, uh, that being said, um, Waterfox is compromised. Don't use Waterfox anymore. Waterfox is officially owned by System 1. System 1 has a privacy policy that is worse than Google and Microsoft combined. They actually use language in System 1's privacy policy saying, we will supplement your profile with things we buy from other companies. That is the company that now owns Waterfox. Now, that company has made an investment in StartPage. In my opinion, StartPage should have told them no, because those policies and those terms are completely antithetical to StartPage's views. And because of that, StartPage should have said no, because it's too controversial. But that being said, System 1 does not own StartPage, nor does System 1 have access to StartPage data. This is something I have verified with the company. Okay. And what they do is their investment means that start page can get funds which will help them keep their servers up and in exchange the ads that you see on start page search results these are bought from the system one network and so system one and start page share the ad revenue that you get when searches are done but again system one does not have any access to start page in my opinion start page should dump the relationship though because of the terms uh the the uh statements written in system one's privacy policy being antithetical to start pages philosophies uh but that being said what i wanted to point out here is that yes you can actually have ads which is not tracking you and that's exactly what start page does where they are taking the search you're doing they're stripping all data IP address any search history anything feeding that into Google via proxy and then getting keyword based ads returned back to you and that is the same thing effectively that Brave Browser is doing, although Brave Browser does not have as much technical detail as StartPage has as far as how each data point is made. I have not seen that from Brave. I have seen that from StartPage. So which one of the two might I trust? Uh, I don't know. Uh, DuckDuckGo has its own problems. Of course, their entire infrastructure is on AWS, which raises a, uh, issues, whereas StartPage has independent servers and privacy respecting countries and nobody can gain access to those except a few key start page employees uh brave i 
don't know where their data is being hosted, who has access to it, and things like that. So these are all things and factors to consider. But if you are looking for a privacy-based search engine, I would look to Brave, I would look to StartPage, and I would look to DuckDuckGo. Those three will get you good privacy-orientated search results, and you can actually set Brave Search in Firefox, in Chrome, in Chromium, in these other web browsers if you would like to do that. It is now an option to do. So with that, I just wanted to point out here that Brave is dumping Google as the default search engine in United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom, and it is using its own search engine instead. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.